to Drinking Broettes the morning after. The morning after. So this uh, is drinking episode, night. This episode Cinco. Oh, thank you for saying that. You're welcome. Because no you way. weren't going to get it. No. no, you were going to have to look it up, and you were going to get it next. I was going to have to count to five <laughs> to do that. <laughs> Un, do, Don't put me on the spot. On sank. This one. Cease. Woo! Is sank uh, f- five in French? Un, do, trois. Trois is three. Sank is four. Cease. Oh. Cease is, uh, I think, five. Don't Z- quote me on this. Z's? Okay, listen. That doesn't sound right. Whatever. That can't be right. We're you just going to run with it. You took only a couple classes of French, you. right? Yes. <laughs> We're going to run with it. And then you realized that you weren't ever going to go. Yeah, the brain, listen, the left. brain's not fully functioning yeah. at 100% today on even, like, I didn't wake up hungover. No, I felt fine. But still, you feel a little bit slower. You're just off. Your brain feels cloudy. Yep. And it, it's only started happening once I got older that I start feeling like this. Well, or maybe I'm just more in tune with my body and I, that I'm noticing that I'm sounding and stupid. And we would just drink more do you remember that yes so true. like you would never really get hung up i mean if you had to work fine but like you would just start drinking again like you would have a little like a bloody mary or something to get the well, like see, i didn't learn that until later on in my mm, life mm, i didn't learn that until mm, i was mm. late 20s mm-hmm. when i met my husband we were just friends at the time and he was like hey let me introduce you to a bloody mary and i went <laughs> where have this been my whole Excuse life me yeah 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 and the be- yeah so alcoholics <laughs> and you know technically still drink in the morning oh yeah because you don't feel it as much because you're keeping the alcohol in your system yeah and your body's not going through the withdrawal when you wake up after drinking when you wake up and you feel fine beware because you're still drunk sure. and then around 10 or 11 it hits you you're gonna be like oh my god i'm getting hung over right like a freight train so you just kind of circumvent that with a little bloody mary get it going so i can't do that because i have to no. do like school pickup i have a and you yeah kids <laughs> to do so it's like i can't do that part of it so i do feel it more because you can't do anything to remedy no you just embrace the suck i think i would take biking in too before oh so you'd like smoke a little weed either do it upright or you take like a biking and something to just like ease into the rest of your day because Mm -hmm. it's not going to be great right biking is a great way to ease into it yeah i'm sure i'm telling you (laughs) are you are you a pill person no i actually a pill my body hates any type of opiates i feel like what happens what do you do um well super constipated number one which i cannot stand yeah they have like more they have medication because to help combat that yeah this is the beauty of big pharma right so oh, they okay. will like give you vicodin and then they will also then put you on another you. medication to deal with the constipation right yeah let me just give you but all is my that money a, that's not a instant thing right so do you just feel like i loopy, do not, you don't like I don't it feel myself mm. i feel, yeah i have terrible dreams i oh terrible dreams okay. i don't yeah i have nightmares for the most part yeah again can't shit i just don't feel good like i feel i don't know i feel blah I guess that's the best way okay, to Okay, you don't it. like it? No, I don't. Oh, it's mama's little helper for yeah. sure. But don't get me wrong. Um, when I got my ACL surgeries and they gave me the morphine drip that you can, you know, press it all you want. I was pushing that bad boy. I'm sure I maxed out. I mean, I was in pain though and I wanted to feel good. Right. And then before I got one of my most recent surgeries, they put something in my IV and all of a sudden it felt like I was drunk. I was just like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. oh, hey. What was that? I'm I like, mean, I'm feeling good. And they just started like, laughing. Did you like go out? No, I just felt drunk. And then they gave me something else. I don't even know what it was. Lord knows. It Lord was, knows. It was amazing. I would love to find out. But, but. it was good for that moment. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, it, not all the time. It, every day, is, it's a little hard to maintain. Yeah. So I'm definitely be hard like, to function in I'm society. a nibbler. I don't really do it that much anymore. But I used to be like a nibbler where I'd be like, take a little. Yeah. Where some people kind of like. Like, we have a friend that's here at the studio that just smokes a little bit of weed all day, right? Yeah. Just kind of, like, evens you out for the day. Sure. Get through your shit. That's what I would do. Like, Smart. the tiniest little sliver. Shit. I say if you and can you just do be it. like, yeah. Why and again, not? like, I can't really do it. I'm pretty aware of when it's, like, becoming an issue, so I don't really do it anymore. Uh-huh. And when you have, uh, like I said, kids, job. When you don't. Like, when you work, at, mean a, when you're when you work at a bar yes do whatever the fuck you want want, right like that isn't your career path right so you know that's where that's where it happened yeah but anyways yeah words are not coming out i'm like rolling away from the mic i know it's okay well you know what we we dealt with a traumatic (laughs) 
issue last night kind of <laughs> like, like, situation oh my god i don't even know where to start with this we were having such a blast yes a blast in a glass. Literally, we're, we, continued, we continued to drink our wine. We went to some great Mexican joint. We were just talking and bonding. And I don't know. We, it closed. Oh, they, they started definitely literally cleaning. They started mopping our feet, which is so nice. The guy came up. He was like, hey, are you guys done with the dip? We're like, no, no, no. Yeah. Like, we the just got our food. It was one of those things. And you went, wait, when do you close? And he's like, nine. He, and it but was he said, tonight we're closing at nine, right? So it's like, it's winter Things mm-hmm. are getting slower, so they just decide to close whenever they but want. Still because it's like people in there. Though. Yeah, there was like a big group of people. There was a big like row. Yeah. another party. There was two like yeah. big parties there. So we stayed talking so until was like, everyone else left. Is it necessary to like mop my feet right now? Probably not. And like trying to pull the chips that like just got set down. Yeah, probably not. No. But anyways, he was he wanted to go home. Sure. Him so we got the hint. And we got the hint. Left. We went, went to down, another place. Yeah, got another glass of wine and. We were standing at the edge of the bar. Mm-hmm. I remember this. And there was just a girl mm-hmm. sitting there. And all of a sudden, like, we were sitting there for a little bit. And then you... Because I was deciding, you guys, I was deciding whether I was going to say, say something. something or not. So it was it was um, my banger sister. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it was the minute you said hi, it opened up the floodgates of talking 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 i will talk about myself all night long Mm -hmm. and will never shut up Mm -hmm. oh hey this is my friend Mm -hmm. cool let me continue to talk about myself Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um rude comment talking rude Mm -hmm. comment Mm -hmm. yeah the kind of drunk where you know girls sometimes get drunk where their their triggers are very quick where like you they keep thinking that you're saying talking shit to them it's girls you could tell you girls insecurities come out a, a lot when they're drinking right so they're like if they think that you're like calling them stupid or saying shit or whatever all their triggers happen so she thought we were like talking shit to her and we're like dude dude we're dude we're joking and we're just fun. Sit, we're just like talking like we're good we're good and you know like well you can tell you have though, to too, calm them down like we're good it's that okay. she she already was an individual you could tell probably was gets triggered by things triggered quickly. triggered triggered for example, she asked how my my husband was and asked if he was still, still. Trumpy. Mm-hmm. Tr- Trumpy. And you were like, what? And I, at first I thought she said chubby. And I said, and you were like, what hold up, fuck? bitch, what? No, no, he's and, not. And then I said, excuse me. And I, she, I kept having to repeat it. And then I still didn't understand it. And you looked at me and you said Trumpy. Trumpy. And, and so I go, why does it fucking matter? I'm sorry. I had to say something at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. I was nice about it still. No, and we but both I said, were like, I said, whoa, what whoa, does it whoa. matter? Wait a second. I was like, that doesn't make an individual. I was like, you can't go judging her husband for that. He's a great guy. And she went, no, 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 I will judge. It matters to it me. It does matter to me. So she just got all And I said, no, this doesn't make people people. You should still be able to hang out with people, right? And even though they have different political views. I said, listen, if we're going to start doing that, I might not even want to hang out with you based upon what you might think. Well, I was thinking, like, what what are you, like, Biden-y? What are you? Uh, Clinton-y? I don't know. Clinton-y? I, like, I don't know. What's the, what's the equivalent of saying someone's Trumpy, right? I like, don't know. But I tried, to, I tried to have her understand, like, hey, this is, doesn't matter. And if it did, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation anyway. Don't start something yeah. that you don't want to get into. Yeah. And then she kind of finally was just like, oh, no, no. Um, uh, uh, uh. Backtrack. She, you know, she was get crawfishing out of there. Like, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. By being offensive. By being offensive. Yeah. But anyways. What did she say to me? Do you remember? I don't know. I remember she spe- specifically. I said something. So I was making a joke, right? Yeah. She was talking about her cats. Oh. And all I made a comment was, so I don't know anything about this chick. And I make, I joke around a lot. So she was like, yeah, like one of my cats. And I was like, oh, you a crazy cat lady? And she went, what's that? And I was like, oh, you have like, you know, eight to 10 cats in your house. And that's all you have is your cats. That's what people that are married and have kids think, think about blah, blah, blah. You're just like, yeah. And she immediately uh, just uh, like uh, attacked. And I went, oh, I was joking. I was like, I love cats. I would have them if I wasn't allergic. And, but yeah, she, she made an attack on women who were married or something. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. So she, she's just a hater. Yeah. Well, I feel bad. It was just kind of for her in a way. Right? Because, first of all, if I had a girlfriend that was like that, I'd help the girl out right away. I said, listen, you need to calm it down. I know. But at this point, like, again, we were friends when we were 16. Like, to me, there's no point in us being friends. I mean, she lives in the same town, which is weird. She followed you here, apparently. 
So everybody, she single white femaled me. And no, she banger sistered me. Sorry. Yeah. So let me explain really quick. Banger sister as this movie with uh, Susan Sarandon and Goldie Hawn. Susan Sarandon has her like life together. She's moved away from her hometown. She's like wh- husband, kids. She may not be like super excited all the time or happy all the time, but she has like her shit together. Yeah. And bit her friend from way back in the day when they used to party hard, Goldie Hawn breezes into town and starts like trying to fuck her life up right Mm -hmm. taking her out making her drink blah 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 and like it's it's cool but it's it's not sustainable you can't go down that road it's not as like fun and funny as the movie it ends up being tragic well, like I go out with my hour. banger sister and like get a fucking DUI or get arrested because she's with some guy that's like a heroin addict. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's real life. The banger sister is like just a funny thing, whatever. And the moral of the story is like Goldie Hawn t- showed her how to live again, you know, and that's oh, not how yeah. it works. You're like, no, I'm listen, I'm fine no, you're already. Fuck you're my shit way up. You want to sleep on my couch, I bet. And you don't want to like <laughs> contribute to everything. And then you like probably won't ever leave. That's the reality of the banger sister. Yeah. So anyway, she she's my friend from when I'm 15, 16 and moved out here. So well, she also had brought up like, hey, like, I'd love to come over and like hang with the kids and, your, you know, and to me and in my head, I thought, well, stop probably stop. dogging on her Trumpy husband. Stop talking shit about my husband and making fun of me for like being married with kids, yeah. making fun of my ring. Yeah. Like being a bitch yeah anyway, that was happened. That's what that was happen. interesting to say the least. That so. was our evening yeah that was <laughs> getting fun. getting mopped our shoes mopped on uh-huh. at the at the taco joint and, the and then running into my banger sister so anyways but we had fun it was great it was a good time yeah and then this morning i woke up and i was like getting ready in the mirror and then i went <sighs> i talked yesterday about me pooping my pants <laughs> oh yeah do you want to say something about that and then on by the, the way if i'm drinking coke that means that i'm like <laughs> Trying to get the engines going. Yeah. But go ahead. Well, no, I think it's funny. Here's the thing. I'm so honest. I really am. And like, I am who I am. You know, I just, I just embrace it. We all do stupid things. I'll talk about it all day long. So you're it's, still in the military, which. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm more. So I have just transitioned more from like an active duty to now what we call like a part time or reserve. Okay. And so that's the only reason why I'm able to really do stuff like this, right? Is because this would technically is my other job. Yeah, yeah. This would be my other job. Yeah. That, and I'm also starting my own business. Yeah. So that's also another job. So you're allowed to do all these things. And I guess I'll just even preface right now that even, so even though I'm still in, right, nothing that I do or say on here represents the United States military air force government i am my own person this is nothing to do with them right right and this is what actually a lot of people have to do now with having social medias and like tiktoks i guess mm-hmm. there's like a bunch of air force academy kids who have a very popular tiktok like millions of followers right but they write on there that their actions and their words and everything is not a direct reflection of the united states air force and the military and that's not affiliated and that yeah. you know the military doesn't basically back them up in yeah, what yeah, they yeah. Do. so we're very separate entities so i hope everyone realizes that it's kind of common do. sense, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm saying it to say it. I am me. So you're doing your I'm, disclaimer that I am you have to do in case anyone. But the thing is, too, I don't want to be known as like the military trick. Like my whole life is not just oh, the for military. Sure. No, no, no. I want to be known beyond as a, that. The shitting and your pants chick. I know. I will, yeah. You will be. Don't <laughs> worry. Don't worry. It's all anybody's ever going to talk about. Oh, there's some <laughs> poop for pants, girl. Oh, we flung a little poopy out of our pants. Did yeah. we? Yeah. I mean, I'll say this right now. We had an old boss who shit his pants um, when he was in Vegas before. Um, he was on a work trip. Okay. Um, how did? Yeah. And they, all the guys were partying in Vegas. Sure. And again, like they were going hard every night thinking it was like their last night there because they didn't know their flights kept being canceled. Right. And he had shit the bed and uh, in a hotel room. I apparently it was like very messy. How and that happened. he, well, because when you get... So I guess when you totally. get so drunk, yeah. Apparently, when you lose happens, control but... of your bowels, yeah, mm-hmm. right, yeah, it just I'm sure just can happen. Depending, I don't know. Again, look, I'm surprised. Sure, and um, he decided not to put like a do not disturb on the door, <laughs> which why like would, you were smart enough to not? at least lock your door. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, mine was even in my dorm room, so no yeah, one yeah. goes in there and cleans it. Right? Yeah, yeah. 
And so the maid found it and, of course, told leadership that was all there. And they had the gentleman stand up in front of everyone and tell them what happened. And he, excuse me, he goes, hey, guys, sorry. Like, I really shit the bed on this one. Like, it won't happen again. I'm like, really, really sorry. And all the guys are sitting there going, what did you do? What did you do, though? Yeah. And then he, like... So they were all really confused. They're like, no, but really, like, I, I shit the bed really on this one. Really shit the one. bed on this like, one. I'm really sorry. <laughs> like, I'm really embarrassed. And all the guys are still like, what the fuck But what happened? did you do? Who's on first? Yeah. And so then he literally went up and said, no, like, I, I seriously shit, shit bed on the bed. On like, this bed. I got bed. so wasted. And all the guys were like, Whoa. <laughs> So, of course, for the longest time, we was, you know, made jokes about it. And it's still, like, the running thing. And now that's going to be me. <laughs> that's gonna be you God, poop, i feel like i pulled a jared i feel like i pulled a jared no because he tells stories about himself all the time and then people are like <laughs> and then they just like know him as those cat stories. puke taylor that's why they call him cat puke Do they? because of some story that he told about did he eat cat, cat puke? puke no i think it was just kind of some cat puke something happened i can't remember what it is sure i'm gonna have to when we have him on we'll have to ask like what is the uh, origin it's something that his ex-wife because his ex-wife used to or current wife that they aren't together sure, anymore yeah. used to message us before he would come on the show and tell us like disgusting shit that he did so that we could ambush like gotcha journalism with him and oh, be like smart. so we heard that you did this is not shit the better whatever right yeah. and he'll be like what the fuck who told you know and it's yeah. like a pretty great moment to get jared because he doesn't think anybody knows reaction to yeah you see from them like I so it was imagine. really cool when she would do that i yeah. mean i'll have to maybe i'll uh, message her and be like what what was the cat puke thing yeah. i forget what that was but, but listen we all have i i feel like we all have stories that probably will sit there and go blah, 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 like only a few people know and they're right. like funny as can be we all have skeletons yeah in our closet that's for sure yeah i don't but yeah uh, mm, <laughs> i'm joking miss goody two so shoes many. over here so um many. we all and here's the thing i'm i'm willing to share it yeah, to yeah. the world because this is just who i am yeah 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 you know and I, this like i said in this group so the drinking broettes is drinking bros broettes sub page yeah is kind of where we're gonna you know get our drinking bros of the week drinking broettes of the yeah. week and like correspond with you guys um so you guys in there the girls in this group and in drinking bros as a whole are exactly that so yeah we have to at least reflect that of like we're not holding anything back or not talking about stuff because they are very honest and i love that right and they'll talk about anything they want you know advice from everyone mm -hmm. like in the group yeah. like they'll they'll post stuff with the girl group only or whatever but we want to do you justice yeah, and we do. the and poop I, story I was like for you guys Pooping and shanking. The poop story was for you, okay? Because we want that was like our, you know, you know, like when people Listen, go I undercover. Have so many, I have so many drunk stories I could tell. Oh, please. All day we'll, long. We'll, pe you know we'll I mean? pepper them in to every show. But we're yeah. like when um, the undercover cops go in to, to like the drug house and they like make them do the drugs to like make sure that they're not a rat, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was us. We had to be like, all right. We got to tell a we story tell so us, that you know yeah, we're not we're not we're not a rat, right? So we're like, you're like, all right, well, I poop my pants, okay? And we're like, all right, you're cool, man. You're cool. You're cool you can stay. Book. You can stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hopefully that's what the broettes <laughs> did. They're like, all right, Tiffany, I see you. Yeah, I see this. I like your honesty, friend. And, and Jesse, then you have to do it. Jesse, just you talked about your Dewey. Yeah, I mean, again, mine aren't as funny. Mine are like <laughs> that was like you're pretty like, tragic. But to me, the funny part of it was the cops driving behind me probably laughing right like there's yeah. first responders in this group too it's like if you were driving behind a girl that was like full-on eating a burger like she was at a kitchen table <laughs> inside her car going you driving one month i don't know <laughs> look because i i was 0.25 i don't know what the fuck okay. I, I don't know what my name was yeah but like i clearly was like eating a burger like i wasn't driving i must have been i'm kind and the, of and the foot impressed. was like a little bit on the i know in a, in a way for you being that far gone and just, I mean, obviously you weren't driving but our fast. blackout selves somehow get us, how? like you got into that room, you locked the door. Right? Right? Like, like our how? blackout selves sometimes take care of us a little bit. They, 
clearly they have yeah. because we are alive yes right so clearly in our ba- our blackout states we have done something to so get we're to still- make sure that we're alive right by the grace thank you self for by taking grace, care of me when yeah. i act like hey idiot. hey blackout me <laughs> drink too thanks much. a lot that that Try needs to, to be a tiktok oh my gosh it does so yeah so jesse and i are getting on tiktok She's and making that's me. gonna be fun. I'm making her get. I love it, but I'm. I'm but making you're her making get me. on TikTok with me. Yeah, <laughs> and so we just started a page. So we're just gonna, you know, just put on some silly videos. I made one that I'm posting today. Have you seen like so with the holidays? Yeah. So by the way, this will probably air later, but it's you know around right the now. It's holidays. around the holidays. It's there is the weirdest fragrance commercials. Fragrance commercials already are to me super strange. Oh yeah, like really, it's just Julia Roberts like coming out of a pool. Yeah, and that's it. And you're or like, or random like little what does that smell like? of things. Yeah, and it has nothing to do at all yeah, yeah, with yeah. the fragrance. And so I made one. Oh nice, nice, nice. And I like it. I like it. It's it just it's me doing random stuff, <laughs> and I named. And then it's just like a weird yeah. name of like oh, Sauvage. I, I, no, I named yeah. the perfume Moist. <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> and by the way, like there's there's a pe- there's a group of people out there who hate the word moist. Oh yes. And I'm not one of the, I'm not triggered by it at all, but p- there Tara are people that it. really really it's funny. Like, can't stand yeah, it. Yeah. It's cringeworthy like Ugh, it's just so weird to that. me. And so I did that and I'm posting it and I'm Beautiful. purposely tagging Tara in it being like, "Hey, cuz hey. she hates the word moist and she hates the word gooch." Like your gooch, like your taint, like okay, gooch or gucci, okay. mm-hmm. gooch. Yeah, 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 yeah. She hates that. Perfect. And she did hate pubes, I guess, for a bit, but she got over that one. Oh, you probably helped her with that. You just said it a bunch. I just said it all the time. Yeah, yeah, I like pubes, 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 constantly. pubes, pubes, yeah. And I said, yeah, like my pubes are super moist. Like the minute she tells me which one she hates, I just get her accustomed to it. I'm a good friend. Okay. Listen, this is what I help my friends out with. Yeah. Like, I'm sure you heard that I didn't like Lady Boner. So you said it like 20 times on the last <laughs> I did show. did say a lot. Yes. So yeah, you, you're here to but help. But I did not know that. And now I, think you I don't did. want to offend you. you I think know? you did. Because listen, I don't I think need, you're lying. I don't Who just you says Lady Boner out of nowhere? You know what's going to happen is later on you're, you're, you're going to be like, oh, you you're la- are, is it a lady bonery friend? Like, yeah. Are you the lady bonery Are you friend? the later lady bonery? Are you Trumpy? <laughs> yep, we're Trumpy and lady bonery. Anyways. That's a mouthful. Let's get to some sponsors. Yes, let's do this. What are we teasing for after the sponsors, though? What are we talking about? Your drunken stories? M- motherhood. I want to ask you. Yeah, I'm curious. <laughs> Stay and tuned. Because you were just talking about how that you juggle it all and how you can't do certain things that yeah. you used to do. Like and day I've drink, been I know. To a mom, so I would love to pick your brain. Okay, perfect. On this, mom, mom advice from the mom of the year. You are the all best. my trophies. All my trophies are above the mantle for mom of the year. Oh, sweet. You know you get a trophy for doing shitty stuff to your kids. Do actually. you? Oh yeah. When I say mom of the year, it means like it's a sarcastic thing. We're like mom of the year, and oh. I was like, I keep all my trophies up here of being mom of the year and doing all the right things. But I'll tell you what. That could be something like I'll tell you what not to do. Yeah. From all my trophies. Let me learn. Obviously, the first one is ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. I maybe got ghostbed involved in my drama last night. Mm -hmm. Sorry, ghostbed. If you get an email from me asking to replace my banger sisters full of piss bed. Yes. Disregard it. Uh, Just tell me no. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. They may actually say yes because they're that fucking cool. But yeah, I don't want to put them. I don't want to get them involved in my drama. Right. In the P drama. Ghost bed doesn't deserve the banger sister treatment from me. Right. No. I'm coming into their house trying to ruin their life. Yes. Anyways, uh, ghost bed right now. Uh, when this airs, I'm not really sure. I think it's going. This is going till Christmas. So. Don't we'll even see. know if it's. But they always have good deals. They always have good deals. Pour a hemp low, for example, right now is 50% off the adjustable base. I'm sure when this airs, it will be another crazy awesome deal because they literally always have good deals. If you're military or first responder, though, that you're always going to get 15% off. Woo! And if you're a civilian little dum dum like me, then you can like deal with these. Uh, you can deal with these deals. <sighs> see? It's okay. Words. Words are not coming easy today. But yeah, you can get yourself you on can, this deal. You can deal with you can deal with some deals. Like who fucking says that? 
Anyways, there's like a spinning wheel when you first go to the website. I think that will always be there. And then they change up the deals that you can win on this like wheel of fortune type spinning Mm, wheel. Bring it on. So it's fun. It's a fun site. They're an awesome company. We love them. And look, they may they may jump right into my drama. They might. Again, they're that cool. You I have don't a bed full you. of your ex boyfriend's piss. Let's get you a new one, darling. This is a real story. That but is anyway, true we won't story. go into it, but we heard it as we were leaving. Anyway, yeah. Drink uh ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. That will never change. Nope. We're always gonna be drinking bros the forward slash drinking bros just because it's easy. Let's just keep it easy, you guys. Mm-hmm. So that you can get the deals that you need to get. And you're not like, oh, fuck. What, what is that? Is it Ross Patterson Revolution? Is it fucking Drinking Broettes? Is it sports? What is it? It's just Drinking Bros always. Next up, we have mm. Luke Blair. Luke we Blair. Were, now, this is open. Because oh, I'll take a sip we of were that. Drink- oh, there you go. Yeah, I'll take there a sip of go. that. Damn it, I can't. I got to go to a bus stop. Anyways, do it. You need to live your life. Yeah. We, so we were drinking this last night. This is Luke Belair forwards dot com forward slash drinking bros L U C B E L A I R E Luc Belair, a pr- uh, product of France, mm. an amazing champagne. Thank God they're a sponsor right now because Dude. we, I, uh, they are coming in handy. You're gonna take, you're gonna need to take another one home. I know. I l- actually love the Lux one. I know. And it's really, I don't know what the deal is with it, but it is really good. Okay, so I've had sparkling wine before, like yeah. a sparkling cab. Those are expensive. Oh, yeah. And the only places I've gotten those are from very small places where you actually yeah, have to travel have like, to get there. That mm-hmm. You can't buy it online. Yeah. And I'm like, this sucks. This, when I, we poured this last night into our cab, it was amazing. I know it was weird, but it like turned it into a little Lambrusco kind oh, of. Oh, my gosh. Very good. So good. Really good. And by it itself, really good. Boner. The gold is awesome. The Lux, I don't know what they put in there. Maybe gold, maybe pure gold, but it really is awesome. And the rosé. If you like rosé, uh, theirs is one of the best. And it's sparkling. So it's kind of way more refreshing than a normal rosé. And uh, not too sweet. So just do it. Yeah. Do it right and do it tight. LukeBelair.com forward slash drinking bros. Even though we're the broettes. What's up? Just quote um, Yinging Twins. What did I say? Do it right. Do, do it, it tight. Do it right. Do it right. Do it tight. Is that Ying Yang Twins or is that Little John? I have no idea. Wow, I'm impressed. I don't know why I said it. I thought that I made it up. Your kids are going to have a cool mom who does rapping. Super cool. Right? <laughs> Obviously, I know what I'm saying and I know where that came from. Listen, kids. I'm in the know. <laughs> I'm the cool mom. Yeah, I'm not like a normal mom. Do you think you are a cool mom? Yeah. For sure. How old are your kids? Um, I have a 16-month-old and a 5-year-old. Okay, so for the non-mother people, how old is 16 months? Almost a year and a half, right? You so round it's it up? 16 months, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, Almost. the reason that we say the months you, with yeah, that one is you? because the growth from one year old to two is insane. Okay. So every month, they are so different. So if you say I have a one-year-old... That's kind of a baby still. Okay. But if you say 18 month, like you have like a big, they've grown a lot. They've gotten more teeth. They're maybe talking. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So in that year, that second year, so much happens so if you s- that we go by months in it. It's so okay, stupid. I but I mean, after two, you don't, right? The people okay. that do like, you know, 20, 27 months, you're like, shut the fuck up. It's two. So from two on... It's pretty like it's the normal progression of growing up. Mm-hmm. But for babies, in you you do months from one to twenty four, okay. just because there's from month to month, it's so different. It's crazy. I feel like that's a mother thing because I know us non moms think it's stupid. We go, um, what are you talking about? How if we're doing the math uh, in our head? Uh, like okay, uh, so yeah, yeah, months yeah, a year, yeah, it's yeah. One, and there's so all these like, jokes about it. Plus so four, stupid. so it's they're kind of almost one and a half. So that, like, for example, when I think when I asked you yesterday too, how old your kid was, when you told me sixteen months, I did that math in my head. Okay, so you're twelve, and then one year. But I noticed 13, that a lot, 14, 15, a ton of moms do that. Yeah, you know. And again, like, it is dumb. Oh god, functioning <laughs> shit is fucking. Oh sorry, Jamie just texted me. Producer just texted me. Bubba Sparks. 
It's Bubba it's get, Spark. Get it right. Get it tight. That makes sense. I, knew, I like Bubba Sparks. Yeah, obviously, oh, I knew booty, that. Booty, Jamie, I knew that yeah, already. Or something like that. No, I'm just joking. I didn't. Bubba Sparks. What is it? Booty, booty, booty? I think he sings booty, 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 be rocking everywhere, maybe too. Oh, okay. I don't even know. Don't quote me on this. I obviously don't know my rappers. Oh, I'm so, quoting everything you say. I, yeah. I write down a quote. But anyway, and so, I, I repeat back to other people later as a direct quote from you. So a 16 month old. So yeah, it's like. <laughs> Is Let's whatever. get you back on it track. Is, it is stupid, and there is some mom shit that's fucking annoying it's to other funny. people. I know it is. And by the way, so before I had my first kid, even while I was pregnant, I was just like, how am I going to do this? I don't even really like kids. Oh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I was just like, dude, how am I going to be a mom? Like, I was never, sure. I was never like, oh, give me that baby, ever. Never wanted to hold the baby. Didn't, do you know what I mean? When like, you first had your baby? No, or no, not mine. Oh, I'm okay, saying yours. like, so you're saying before? Before I had oh, my kid, I was okay. never that person that mm-hmm. was like, oh my gosh, let me see the baby. Yeah. I was like, your cool. life is over. You had a baby. I'm never going to call you again, probably. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> you're like, great. I'm, I'm like, so okay, glad I'm not friends anymore. Yeah. I'm like, well, lost another one. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I did have kids later in life, so I was like, definitely bitchy like that. If someone would walk onto a plane oh, with a baby, I'd wow. be like, that baby doesn't need to go anywhere. This is fucking a nightmare. They would come into restaurants. I'd be like, they don't need to eat out. <laughs> what is wrong with it? I mean, I was like horrible. Oh, right? wow. So you were anti-baby. Almost. I wasn't anti-baby. I was just like, I wasn't it was, into wasn't your kids, thing? dude. Mm-hmm. Like, I just... I was a selfish little fucking piece of shit. Did to be you babysit honest with you. when you were younger at all? Well, I had, I have a brother that's seven years younger than me. Oh, so it's like I did definitely watch my brother. My brothers are younger, so I definitely watched them. And when he was a baby, there's a picture of me like holding him. Like I had experience with sure. babies, and I have younger, younger brothers and things like this. Um, and my brother had a kid way before me, so I had um experience with his son Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so i had it was around babies it just wasn't my first choice for anything like i'd always be like no kids at weddings ever what the fuck is wrong with you ever why would you ever need a kid at a wedding you know except for to throw the flowers and get the hell out it's like parents have a good time you know what i mean like get a babysitter for your child i know it might be hard for you to separate from them but do it and have a blast you and your husband get drunk have wicked sex be hung over the next day. Get a babysitter. Yeah. You will totally appreciate it. And you will probably need that time together. Yeah. To and then once I had kids, there was like a wedding that was like far away that uh-huh. I had to travel to. And I was like, Ooh. and no kids? What the fuck do you want from me? So I'm going to have to pay for them to be, it's you know what I mean? Money. Taken care of by God knows who. And then I need to fly to yeah. this weird ass place with my husband, get a rental car, you know? Mm-hmm. So then I was like pissed once I already had kids. But anyway... Even while I was pregnant, I was just like, dude, like, what the, how is this even gonna, am I gonna see the kid and be like, yeah, what am I gonna, gonna even feel? feel? I just had no idea. And then it just, you know. So then when you pop the, vi- the, the baby old, out of your the old old vagina, all the cliches happen. Although I wasn't like in love you, with saying, him right away. Feel? Oh, you weren't? Um, because they, once the baby <sighs> comes out, right, they, they put the baby on your chest. On you, yeah. Right? To skin to skin, skin, skin contact. Yeah. Okay. And it was amazing and it was crazy, mm-hmm. but I wasn't like, oh my God. I was Were you just in like, awe still? Like, I can't believe this came out of me. This it was just nuts. crazy. It was shock. And then my kids were colicky. So it's really oh. hard to bond with a colicky kid at first. Because they have it. Because they're just screaming. Oh. They're, they can't eat anything. They can't lay down. They're just like screaming. I mean, constantly for three months. Oh, I had no idea. I yeah. thought it was just because you couldn't cuddle with your baby as much because they were constantly like doing stuff with it. And I don't know if they had to run tests on colic. No, kids. no. So no. colic is something it's it's a number of things but it's usually st- a stomach issue so every time they're just uncomfortable all the time so Aww. they're just always screaming and then things start to grow and around three months they get out of it right mm-hmm. but the first three months of your life with the baby nothing is great Aww. that's um, a it, great introduction i know a, like so a mom you're kind of like sitting to yourself Sitting there going, is this really what motherhood's like? Yeah. Wow. And thinking that it's like that for everyone, because I didn't really know, you know, I didn't talk to a lot of moms, right? Because none of my friends had kids at that point. Mm -hmm. And so it was just like, I just thought that's how babies were. And I was like, dang, why the fuck does anybody do this? This is, how do you do anything? This is insane. And then when I found out that it was like, I went to someone's house and brought him and they were like, 
that baby's colicky. Like, I'm sorry. Like, are you okay? Like, this is crazy. Oh. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Now there's like an answer. Cause I would see other people and they're be just laying. You know, those babies that just like sleeping yeah. and they just like lay it's on you the happy whole time, always happy. And I'm like, how does that happen? Yeah. Like why, ha- why so, is mine not that way? Yeah. yeah. So it took me a second to bond with him, to be sure. honest. Cause you just like, you are literally just trying to make sure you're trying to find out what's wrong with a baby for three months. You can't get to know them. You can't really like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? That makes sense. So I bond with my kids like a little bit later, but when you do, it's just like, it is amazing. Yeah. But I never had the thing of like, oh my God. Just love right you. away. I just love you everyone's so much. And I think that's so okay. Different, though. No, it yeah, is. Yeah. Everyone, I feel like everyone's experience is always going to be different. Because I've heard some of my my friends who, who are all moms compare and contrast, you know, their stories with others. Or you're, you see stuff on TV or you, you know, literally YouTube videos. And you see all these things and you mm. think that they're supposed to happen. And then when it doesn't happen to you, you sit there and go, why? What's wrong with me? Yeah. Right? Yes. Did you guys um, try for a while? Did you guys just... They just came on and happened quick the first one was an accident was it okay happy accident Mm -hmm. happy about it um it was i think it was the only way that we were going to actually pull the trigger to be honest okay on the because on having a kid yeah because we were like selfish little assholes and like we just were like oh well this isn't the right time we gotta wait till we get a house we gotta wait till we get our business going we gotta Mm. wait till we have enough money and then so familiar it would have been right now to be honest and it's like no, you can't wait for that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, babies can survive in a cave. So it's you don't have to have a nice house. You don't have to have, you know, you need to have things in place to take care of them. I mean, don't be fucking in jail or shit sure. like that. But like you don't, not, it doesn't have to be totally perfect. Yeah. It will all kind of work out. But I think a lot of people have that mindset though. Because I yeah. haven't been there before. And I think that's why a lot of people are waiting, waiting mm-hmm. or not having kids at all. Because if you wait for the perfect time, it will never happen. Yeah. And so all of a sudden then you're 40, 45, 50, whatever. And you're like, oh, well, I can't do it now. Mm-hmm. And life is still not perfect. So there you go. Great. Yeah. Now I'm stuck. Great. Um. And a lot of people are choosing not to have kids, which is totally yeah, fine. Yeah, that's your thing. Um, for me, it was just such a load off of my like my thinking. Like when I say I was selfish, it was so much energy to be like, how do I make myself happy today? Mm-hmm. Like I need to make sure that I am like treated right, right? I need to be happy. I need to be following my passion. Okay, I I need need to be living my dream. If it doesn't make me happy, I don't do it. That kind of shit. Oh yeah, and so and it's so exhausting, dude. To to make sure that you are okay and your confidence is good all the time. Once you have a kid, it just like takes it all off of you, Mm -hmm. and all you care about is if they're happy, if they're confident, if they're having a good day. You don't give a shit about yourself anymore, and it's so fucking freeing. So it took a load off. Took a load off because you're just like okay. All I now need to focus on is taking care of this kid. So going to make money for the kid, Mm -hmm. it might not be my passion. Sure. It might be a, you know, a fucking dumb office job, but I, I'm going to do it because the end result is taking care of this and you can find happiness in that. Right. Yeah. Cause you're just like, do you think it helped you kind of realign these views and values kind of of yours dude? after having kids? Yeah, it just kind of, like like, I said. this is more important. This is more important than me. Mm -hmm. There's so many, like, again, I think about how I used to think. And I was just like, and not everybody's like that. Like, not everyone is selfish and a a little asshole. But I was, right? Uh And so it was, I think about the things that I used to fucking think about. And I just go, what a little fucking idiot. What a loser. Thinking that that was was. so (laughs) important. important. No, well, and you know what? That comes with maturity, I'm sure, as well. Totally. Growing up. Totally. You know, because I, I feel like maybe even as kids, at least as teenagers and oh, everything yeah. else, like we've all been that way. Oh, totally. And that's why it's so hard. So like I'm one of four kids, right? And I'm the oldest. Oh, dang. Yeah. And I'm 33 and the youngest, my youngest brother is 21. He's okay. about 22. And so there's a bit, there's like a decade between us. And so for me, I, it's hard because he's in that phase where life is kind of shit no well life's like he's amazing and he's super oh, smart I'm and sure. super talented but life i was in that zone too life's 
I was fucking amazing too, but him. I didn't know shit. Right? Yeah. You know, and he has different values and mindset on things. And what happens is you get older, you learn a lot, you fuck up a lot and you learn from it. Mm -hmm. And so you could sit there and preach all day long. You know, I could, you know, even your, if you came back into the future, right? Or you came yeah, from yeah, yeah. and what talk to your younger self, I'm still sure your younger self would be like, yeah, okay, older Jesse. Dude, nobody could tell don't me believe shit, you. dude. Right. No one can tell. I'm sure people own. told me all the things that I'm saying right now. Mm -hmm. And I did not for one second listen. Yeah. Right. And um, yeah. So. So then the, so you didn't, the first one was like, oopsies. Oopsies. Second and then one. I try, we tried for the second one. Okay. And I had to really convince old Trumpy pants. <laughs> <laughs> we have to call him Trumpy all the I time I call him that. I said, hey, Ross. Hey, Trump You feeling Trumpy, Trumpy tonight? <laughs> and he would just start laughing. <laughs> what a little fucking. Right. Oh, geez. Uh, Snowflake so idiot. <laughs> did you Trumpy. <laughs> anyway. Did you guys try for a while? Or no, I felt like it was while well, it was six months. Okay, but when you have never tried before, mm -hmm. and you're just like your whole life, we're trying not to mm -hmm. get pregnant, right? And then um, you you have a kid, and you're like, oh, okay. Well, I've never gone through the thing of trying and yeah. like um, had a miscarriage. Um, I've had a miscarriage before, but. Uh, and have two healthy kids so it's like yeah. that also is something that you don't really shouldn't it people make a big deal about it but i i promise you that everyone even that has kids everyone that i know has that has had two or three kids has also had a miscarriage really? so uh, somewhere along the line yeah it just doesn't always take it doesn't always and it's nothing that anyone does it just doesn't always mm -hmm. work out you know the ones that are hardcore are more than three months you know like mm -hmm. those miscarriages that's, that's that, hard that is something i don't have experience with and i cannot fucking imagine mm -hmm. but it's the same idea it's nothing that you did it's just your body sometimes doesn't with anything it I just know. doesn't always work right and then the next time you do something it it's works it's hard though still like so i talked about it on like one of the first drinking bros episode i was ever on but my husband and I, so I'm 33, mm -hmm. and for a little bit there, I, when I was younger, um, after my first divorce, there was I was like, I don't want kids. I didn't want kids with him either. Totally. I just didn't want it. I have loved kids my whole life, though, and I always did want to be a mom, but to me, I had to find the right person, and yeah. I never found him yet, so I just didn't want to do it on my own. Yeah. Once I married my husband, I was like, I want to have kids with you, so he has yes. a daughter, right, from his past relationship, and I love her and I saw him as a dad with her and I that it was one of the things like, too that made yeah, me yeah, love yeah. him even more. Yeah. And so um I think was it 2017 is when we were like, hey, we'll probably we'll stop preventing. Yeah, yeah. Stop not mainly like stop preventing. I didn't want to like try try, mm -hmm. but it got to the point Put to where like I pressure. actually thought that I was gonna be pregnant super quick. I know. Right? Because you hear And all that's the what time, you think because you're trying so hard not to get pregnant your whole life, you go, Right. Oh boy. But also people we go. constantly are getting pregnant on accident, nonstop. All like the we time. weren't even trying. From like having sex one time. And you're exactly. like, what the fuck? So I honestly thought it was going to happen yeah. in 2017. It did not. And so it was fine. So I started looking up some stuff and I saw like the basal thermometer, right? To get yeah. the temperature. Mm -hmm. And so I like just tried that. It wasn't like trying to have kids, but just wanted to, was curious. Just all using it, all the tools, yeah. the app, Well, the it thing. never picked up on my ovulation like ever. And here's the thing, too. I've been really fit and athletic my whole life. I didn't start my period until I was, like, 18. Oh, dang. Right? My mom and I didn't. We are period until much later in life. Oh, but it's like a genetic life. thing. Okay. Well, my younger sister started hers at 16, but okay. I think it's just because of um, how active we were and, and then also, like, our metabolism. Too. It was great. Yeah. Um, and I've never been regular. And I know we're getting, like, into the, <laughs> the meat and potatoes thing. Hey. But I just have it. I'm just being real. I yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I don't know when it's going to happen. It's either a couple weeks late, a couple months late. I don't know. So that made it like as I start to research more, I was like, wow, there's actually only a few day window. It seems oh like. Oh my God. It's like hours. If you really break it down, it's like 24 oh, hours. Well, that makes it even worse. Yeah. No, but it's like 24. No, yeah. There's a 24 hour period, right? But you have to like do it before and after. And I know. Like yeah, yeah. And that's the thing I promised myself is I was like, I don't ever want to make this a chore. Like I love sex. My husband and I have great, like a great, you know, sex life. I never wanted to make it to where I was like, hey. Like, let's do it. And it's fine to each their own. But I just didn't want to do that. The guy who sold us our house, 
he I was like, hey, dude, congratulations. Like you're having a kid. He goes, thank God. He's like, I'm so so miserable with the whole process. He's like, I'm not even excited to have a kid. And I said, excuse me, what do you mean? And I don't even know this guy. It was like the first time I ever met him. And he was like, dude, he's like, my wife just made a job. And it just got to the point to where I didn't like it anymore. And I was like, oh, that's a bummer. Well, any woman listening that has ever tried is kind of, is not laughing, but they're like, that's always how it, it that's just how it is. Well, I, well, you finally get to that point. And I said, like, I do say like by, th- by six months yeah. of like taking the pregnancy test, thinking, you know, like seeing if you're a little bit late with your period, but you're just not regular, yeah. like after six seven months a year of this you just go all right bro so we decided after a year yeah of not getting pregnant of like trying was, but not trying trying not trying, trying 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 thinking it would happen yeah i decided to we decided to go to a doctor he got a sperm test it i got my eggs checked out everything was good there blood tested hormone levels were good um they cleared my fallopian tubes which fuck that process by the way Oof. that was awful um and everything was checking out so yeah. he was confused as to why i wasn't pregnant yet and especially been in my 30s mm-hmm. you know he thought to himself well since you're so irregular with your periods and you've always been your whole life you might have pcos mm-hmm. which once he was explaining to me what it is it's kind of like an infertility diagnosis in okay. a way and so but what does it do it just makes it really hard pcos for is, them, i guess is like for poly- the egg to it's like a something polycystic or something yeah yeah i'm trying to think what syndrome it is i forget um but yeah basically it just makes it harder to get pregnant okay so, so it's like, harder for the egg to actually like attach or i think all it's because because we're irregular we yeah. don't know the window that we're in so okay so you just miss it you always miss it yeah we're always missing it we don't know when it's gonna happen mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um so i guess it has other you know i guess there's other side effects that your body feels because of it yeah and so some girls i guess have really bad pcos According, you know, to what I've heard. Yeah. But with me, it's just mainly my irregularity. Yeah. So he put us on fertility medication to be like, hey, hopefully this like help. this It'll Clomed just... will help yeah. to maybe regulate you. And what would happen is I would start my period and day three of my period, I would take it to day eight. So I take it for five days. And then according to that, like 14 days later or something is was supposed to be my ovulation window. And it would just make it the window. Yeah. 14. So we did end up having to have a window where okay. it was like, here we go. We kind of had to. Yeah. Right. You do. And Unfortunately. so while I still had to try to make it a chore and sure. like do six and stuff, it, there were some days where I was like, hey, we need to, we need to bang it out. Right. <laughs> so we could try to have a kid. And yeah, so yeah. we've been dealing with that since January of this year already. So, so it's been almost a year. A year. And um, it's been stressful because he's not always home. I'm barely ever home, which is another reason why I decided to slow some things down because we would like to have a family. Right. But you have to be in the same. We have to be in the same house, house for a to month. have sex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, too, is my doctor wouldn't give me like a, an entire prescription of Clomed. He just give me the one prescription for that month. So what would happen is once I would start my period, I would call him up and say, hey, I need to make I sure I get pick up my vacation at least yeah. two days. And so one time I started my period when I was out of town. And, you're and like, so Fuck. we're on different schedules and I ended up calling. I remember I ended up calling the emergency doctor and he was so rude to me over the phone. He's like, this is not an emergency. Number one. Number two, like call tomorrow morning. I was like, tomorrow morning's too late because I've been trying to call you guys for the last few days. Right? You can you just answered. call in a prescription? Can I mean, you just what's call the a prescription really quick? And he's like, "This is not." I'm not getting high off of it, right? And I said, "Oh yeah, no, don't don't worry. I just been trying to get pregnant for the last two years. That's no fucking no emergency. big deal. You're only like, messing with someone that's fucking. No, I just got to wait another month. <laughs> and like, I was you're messing so with the woman that just upset. started her period. So way right? to go, good for you. Yeah, you just poke the bear, dickhead. Listen, you drove over there, and did you kill him or no? Well, I was in him. Vegas, so I couldn't. I, I I called my husband and I cried. You cut off a finger. Oh, listen. Yeah, and I, that's I the emotional. other option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought that month was a wash, and so we didn't care. We didn't do anything. You know, we just like did you're our like, thing. Fuck. Yeah, and I end up getting pregnant that month like the one month i didn't take fertility medication that you weren't i got pregnant Mm -hmm. so we got pregnant in july that i can't you don't need it we still didn't know the window we were trying to figure out when we conceived so by the time that i found out i was pregnant which by the way like i've been taking pregnancy tests for the last few years it's just like a normal thing we have tons of boxes of all this stuff we've tried a lot of different methods Mm -hmm. um 
I was just so used to taking, you know, them and it being negative. So I was already a week late. I took the test, nothing. So I was like, cool, just another month to go. Here we go. And I was feeling really exhausted, super tired. Um, My boobs were getting bigger. Like, you know, like the typical, I guess, side effects you can feel anyway from starting your period. Starting your period, but at the same, but when you aren't starting it, you're like, "Uh uh-oh. I just thought it was another, I was just thought I was late again. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Because I was always late. And my husband, I remember one night we went to get sushi, of course, and we went to a winery after. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't like in the mood for any of it. And it was pee nonstop. And he was. Which a- is weird because we're always in the mood for a winery always. and sushi. Yeah. Never will I ever be like, no, thank you. No, that was the weirdest thing. Yeah. You're like, so, why am I not into I know. This? Why am I not wanting to drink wine? <laughs> Hello. This is so unlike me. And so he, and I slept that whole day. Yeah. Too. And he was like, you should take a pregnancy test. And I was like, whatever uh, yeah. and i didn't want to tell him that i took one already it was negative because i just didn't want to i was like okay maybe i will so i took one that night completely forgot about it the next morning i wake up and i look down and like you know i got my sleepy eyes on and i'm like what wait wait what, what? i've never seen this before there's two lines on this Aww. so i took the five other sticks out that i had and peed uh, you know yeah, put yeah. Them, peed in the yeah. cup and put them in and You're i was like, like this they real? all were positive positive. and i woke him up i'm like christopher christopher get up get up and he's like, what? I was like, we have to go to the drugstore right now, like to a convenience store. I have to get more like pregnancy the real tests. deal. Yeah. And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, well, these are saying I'm pregnant, but I don't think I am. So we need more. And he was like, wait, what? And he was so happy. Yeah. But I was nervous. Yeah. Because you're like, this just feels Because I didn't want to believe it. Yeah. 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 And so I took 25 pregnancy sure. tests. <laughs> sure. Just about. I think probably three or four is good. Yeah. No, I had a really yeah, yeah. sure. And so I did. I took so many because it was such a big deal, you know. No, like, no, no. And I really wanted to make sure because yeah. I didn't like I was getting excited. But yeah, I didn't want to get my hopes up. Yeah. Of course, we called my parents because my parents. It was gonna be their first grandchild, you know. Yeah. And I just had to tell them, and they. And it was. I was so glad I told them because I have a mom to talk to throughout the whole time because we didn't tell anyone else. We didn't mm-hmm. want to tell anyone until we were you know past thirteen, fifteen weeks. Mm-hmm. And I'll be honest, the rule of thumb, yeah. like I tried not to get that excited in my head and really future plan and like think of names as much or like get clothing. Like I didn't, I hate to say this, but I didn't want to get my hopes up because I, I thought something might happen. Right. Right. And I was scared. And the last thing I wanted to do was just constantly think about this all day long. And then it'd be even worse if I was to lose the baby. Mm-hmm. I will say, though, that there was many moments because I've been wanting, you know, we would try and have kids for a while. So it was hard. So there's moments I'd be at the grocery store and see kids with their mom. And I'm like, that's going to be me one day. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And um, so by the time I figured it out, they were like, I think you're like six and a half weeks pregnant. And I had to go to a photo shoot in Las Vegas that literally the next day mm-hmm. that i found out so i wasn't really too pumped about going there i didn't want to never wanted like, to do a photo shoot when you like you aren't showing but you're not like I'm not feeling, feeling great myself. you're like oh god and i can't like say anything and it's my the worst. boobs were like great they were huge but then sure. i also had people hit me up and saying ask me if i had implants and i was like, <laughs> like no I'm calm down technically pregnant but right. i don't want to tell you and right of course they didn't want to do a whole shot of all the girls with like in um crop tops with their belly showing and i was like no no, I, and you. I was the only one who didn't want to do it. And I was just kind of like, Ugh. so I just would cover up my stomach. Mm-hmm. And that's not my scene anyway. Like, I don't like yeah, showing yeah. as much. And so I try not to stress it out, like be stressed, but I was. And I'll say this once week seven hit. So only like, you know, another week. week. Yeah. Half a week more. I had the worst morning all day. Like they call it morning sickness. But I was sick all day. No, it's I never could- just in the morning, by the way. In the movies, they make it seem that way. No. And they call it morning sickness for some reason, but it happens. I would get sick at night. I would get oh my sick God, like yeah. all the time. I was like, yeah. It was terrible. I'll and I, it right happened now. like throughout the whole pregnancy for me too. Like it oh. wasn't just the beginning. Jeez, are you kidding? I mean, sometimes like if I would eat the wrong thing or it, it just, you're, look, pregnancy is not fucking sweet. I, well, that, that like, was not problem. a fucking dream boat at all is i've seen all these things i've heard all these things and so in my head i'm sitting there going this isn't normal like why do i feel like shit the whole time like Like, i couldn't even eat without feeling like i hated food when i was pregnant yeah and i just wasn't feeling myself Mm -hmm. i got to the point to where like you know getting you know the guys at work are like hey just stay home yeah we don't want to deal with your ass (laughs) because you feel really sick and they're like get on medication for sickness because i took some stuff but i think i did fenugrin and like some of those um prescription yeah uh nausea yeah she gave me some stuff yeah, to yeah. use mm-hmm. but so we finally so i 
I got in a little bit earlier. Pro, I don't know, like nine weeks or ten weeks or something for my ultrasound. And, you know, she went in and she was like, okay, so here's your gestational sac and, like, here's a little embryo. And it's not really as developed as it should be. Uh, maybe, and, you know, and Chris is in my ear going, well, you're, you know, we don't know when you conceived, but you're probably super early. Right. All these other things. And I was like, yeah. And she took the pictures. She didn't say anything. She just, like, left with the pictures. She didn't let us have them. Mm-hmm. And then she was just telling us what could be the options. Like, hey, uh, you could be really early. Um, so you're not fully developed. You could have not even developed a child really in there. You just developed a sack or you could be having a miscarriage. And it kind of, I, my heart sank when you heard that word it, it, my heart sank mm-hmm. because on the way there, I was super excited. I mm-hmm. was making a video, like it was keeping kind of like a video blog blog in, in an essence of like this whole little journey. And I was like really excited and it just felt like my whole world came crashing down. Right. And so did I you had, post the story? No, no you were just I, making no, I was the video it for later. to do like a long thing. Yeah, I was saving it for later to like let people know so they can see my genuine reaction. Cause I didn't Which by the way, you're going to make this video. Like you can get pregnant. Yeah, no, no, no. We yeah. know that I it's fine, but yeah, 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 yeah. But it was just, it was just hard. And yeah. my husband no, no, no. was working that weekend and he was working a lot during that time. So the so one time that working. I needed him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To really be there for the weekend while I was dealing with this stuff in my head because I went in to get my blood test again because she was like, hey, we want to check your HCG levels yeah. throughout a few days to see yeah. how they're doing. And yeah. she called me Monday when, you know, my husband wasn't there and he's been out in the field and he and she just was like, hey, just want to let you know your levels went down and yeah. you're absolutely having a miscarriage. And I just it, it was bad. Like yeah. I I felt like immediately I kind of went into Everyone handles things differently. And I've dealt with a lot of shitty situations and hard times. For some reason, this was like really hard for me. And I just went into a little bit of a spiral. Like I was really sad. And yeah. Hurt. And I immediately started blaming myself mm-hmm. and wondered what the hell that I did. Maybe I shouldn't even gone on this photo shoot. Maybe I stressed myself out. Maybe I didn't get enough sleep. Maybe I wasn't eating healthy enough because mm-hmm. I could barely eat anything. Because you couldn't eat anything. Yeah. It was just a lot. And mm-hmm. then I kind of just was wondering why I would even be given a child if it was taken away. Yeah. Kind of thing. Getting yeah. bitter in that mm-hmm. sense. And then wondering if I should even try again or is this, am I ever going to get pregnant? There was a lot of things circulating in my head. And thank God my mom, I could talk to her about it. Mm-hmm. My mom had four. Yeah. She lost one at 16 weeks. So I Dang. lost mine at 10. Right. Um, so it was hard. And we went back in to do a double check on the ultrasound. And she goes, your gestational sac is continuing to grow. You're now at 11 weeks. This is not a good thing. Your body's not getting rid of it. Um, you've obviously you not to yeah we need to get rid of it and she's like typically we'll give the pill i guess or something before nine weeks um which we don't recommend in your case we recommend just going in and guess it's called it doing a dnc or mm-hmm. something but basically just scraping mm-hmm. everything out and all i asked was like is that going to make me feel normal quicker because i was still feeling all the pregnancy symptoms right like, that's where it was but really not, mentally yeah, getting to yeah, my yeah, brain yeah, yeah because during that whole weekend my mom and i would talk every day and i was like there's no way i'm having a miscarriage because i still feel pregnant like i'm still sick i'm feeling worse and mm-hmm. she was like yeah you know with me and so for me it was really hard to feel pregnant and not and know that you're not actually going to yeah 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 so we, they schedule it for two days later and so we got it and I'll, I'll be real. Like I was in a very depressed state for a mm-hmm. week after that. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't even sleep in my own bed. I had a very messed up schedule. I was crying nonstop. I was journaling, like mm-hmm. I was very upset. My husband didn't really kind of know what to do during that time. He was, cause he was gone Yeah. when I really needed him and he tried to be there for me, but he couldn't. And I get the job thing, but I was just, I was just trying to take it all in. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, obviously I had my mom to talk to and it got to the point at the end of that week, I was starting to feel a little bit better. My mom said, I love you and you need to grieve however long you need to. Mm -hmm. Um, But I want you to know how strong you are and I love you to death and I don't want you to have this overtake you. I don't want this to negatively impact your life. Um, And you just keep going down on this. She's like, it's good to grieve, but then I always need you to bounce. You need to bounce back and that's the type of person that you are. Right. And so after we've had this talk, it was very, it was coming from the most loving place possible. Like I just paraphrase it, but it was, she was so loving I was like, okay, I'm gonna sleep back in our bed. I really need to talk to Chris about things and just like get back on track. And we need to get back on track. And be like, we're gonna do this again. Yeah, we know now. That's the the one thing that I was told, like after miscarriage, and a friend of mine was too. Is like the doctor's like, well, we know you can get pregnant. Yeah. So that's huge. And that yeah. And 
since it is something that's pretty normal with anyone that has, uh, you know, has multiple kids or has, you know, been trying for a while or, or however, mm-hmm. like you, it ha- it's happened to a lot of people. So the fact that like, you know, whatever that you guys got got pregnant that's yeah. had a pregnancy test that was positive like you know you can get to that step and then it really is just like fostering an environment before that you know what i mean like mm-hmm. i don't know and again i don't think there's anything you can do well that's the thing so is it's i like, read a lot and i talked to him a lot about you it just and my keeps sister, trying yeah my sister who didn't know much and she doesn't ever want to have kids she kind of was like well did was there anything that you did wrong was there anything that you could have done different and i said that's funny because i've asked myself the same questions no and i know she wasn't coming the answer from was an no. ill place and i said listen what it was saying when it comes to miscarriages and stuff like this, unless you're doing like super hard drugs, you know, and shit like that, like you're just being crazy, throwing yourself downstairs. And even then, you those know, ladies can still happen. It's it's with all the it's called a chromosome abnormality, right? Where something's not linking up appropriately in your body, and your body is going. We need to terminate this mm-hmm. because if this baby continues to grow, it's probably not going to be sustainable in life. And there's right. issues with it. Right. Right. And so it's basically your body's way of kind of shutting it down. And I had to realize that too in my head and go, yeah. okay, it's probably for the best. It's hard still. It's hard. And you know what? Um, until I start talking to people about this, and I haven't really told that many people I was going to share on my platform because I think it's good to talk about these things because mm-hmm. so many people can relate. Mm-hmm. Until I start talking to some other moms about it, they were like, no, I've been through them too. And I was like, oh. And it made me feel more comforted. Mm-hmm. It made me feel like I wasn't alone. We, I could talk a little bit more about it to someone who understood. Right. Who, I, who knows what I went through. Right. And so that's the only reason why I'm willing to share it is because I think that maybe it helps. And yeah, others can know, like, you're not alone. You're not out there grieving by yourself. It sucks. It's fine. Everyone deals with grief differently. I didn't, you know. Yeah. It was hard on me. I think the biggest thing that I wrote in my journal that, like, made me cry every time I read it. You know, because I'd write the journal for my future child mm-hmm. and do not cry, Tiffany. Uh, <laughs> it was all right. Do not cry. It was one of those things where I was like, I have accomplished so much in life, right? Like I've been the first to do so many things. I have a laundry list of accomplishments, like so many things that so many people be proud of all these accolades. And the thing that I was going to be proud the most of, and which is why I wrote was having you. Right. Right. Like that would be my biggest accomplishment. I know. <laughs> And so it's just one of those things where I read that and I was like, it's going to happen. I'll get my moment. Yeah. I don't know when, but I will. And I think the best thing is to have faith and hope and continue. And honestly, for the last few months, because it happened back in September Mm -hmm. and the, um, you know, the last few months, we've just been doing our thing and we've grown so much together as a couple going through this. And we've been, it's actually even better for us. Yeah. It's made us closer together. Yeah. I like the weird thing of like, the medication didn't come through yeah, and right? you know that like you don't really need uh, uh, yeah, that you, you kind of just like someone just told me like the last couple months when i was like really when we were trying and i was just like dude this is taking forever they yeah. were just like you just have to have sex all the time like i'm yeah, sorry but just like too. all the time and especially when you feel like you want to because your body really does you know we it are made you, you know kind of made to like make kids right Mm -hmm. so your body will tell you like if you find your husband like super attractive you're probably like um you know close to ovulating Ovulating. or things like this so you know just be really being in tune with that and then you know and just doing it all the time and And maybe not when you want to but like it's cool that you kind of know from that one dick doctor that didn't come through. Right. Now, you I know, can. you don't have to be on the fucking medication all the time. Mm-hmm. And then again, if you if you feel like it's, you know, taking too long or it's not happening, you can get back on it. But at least, you know, you can kind of like try in a different exactly. way. Now, well, the biggest thing, too, it, I would say even for us, it wasn't the amount of times we have sex because we have when we're together. We have plenty. It's of that sex. you're not together. The problem is we're not together, which yeah. is another reason why I had to sit there and really reflect on my life and look at my career and sit there and go, what do I really want in life? Yeah. Like at the end of it, do am I going to like work my ass off the whole time or do I really want to have kids? And if I want to have kids, we're going to have to make some sacrifices. Yeah. And so I'm it's worked out really well with doing this and mm-hmm. being able to slow things down. So hopefully we'll have more time together Yeah, and be able to, to start a family, yeah. you know, someday. Well, thank you so, for talking about that. Yeah. I think I'm so- you, I'm going to make you the drinking broette of Aww. the week this week only because that's really fucking hard. Like it's hard to 
talk about it because yeah. you do feel like it is something that you did and it is a really fucking weird you you go back and forth with it like you're like i'm fine sure. and then you're like I'm not. think about one thing or see a little baby clothes or something you know what i mean so like it's mm-hmm. it's really like every day it's going to be a different thing and it is really hard to talk about and not that there's like a stigma i think a lot of people now do like we all kind of understand now that it is pretty common mm-hmm. and so it's not like super stigma but it is so fucking hard so thank you for being open yeah and i think um i think a lot of people i hope i feel hope, i, I hope, hope people, people will be like in it, okay cool and like they're not alone yeah and, and that it's we okay all, things will get better and even people you know again people that have healthy kids have had miscarriage so it's not it's it's not uncommon and mm-hmm. it you know your body will do what it's supposed to do i'm pretty sure and yeah. the journal will be going to the right person it but will anyway yeah love you love you what what you, you guys love no love yeah. note <laughs> can't wait for you to come back this is so fun um we will see you soon drinking broettes good night good night yeah, you've been watching every move and plotting your next move on every girl I'm moving on. Yeah, don't show better things to do. Yeah, go buy some fucking shoes. Yeah, you're irritating. Yeah, you're